First up, a smartphone gadget I don't think I've ever come across in public, but there are a lot of potential uses for this. You're looking at a portable 1080p display with a trick up its sleeve. It can be completely powered by your phone. So one cable connecting your smartphone and this display and all of a sudden you've got either a full desktop experience or just a better way to watch your Netflix shows on the go. Fun fact, I used to be a big fan of the drum kit. So this blew my mind. It's a kit containing four sensors. You attach one onto each foot and then one onto each of two drumsticks and you can play the drums anywhere. It also doesn't really matter what surface you're hitting. It could be a table, it could be your lap. I wouldn't say it quite replicates the feel of a drum kit, but it's about as close as you can get without one. I think he's a fan. I think he's into this one. The Osmo Mobile 3 is pretty much the king of affordable smartphone stabilizers. It's not the cheapest, but considering just how smooth it can make your footage, it's worth a slight premium. Take this video taken on an iPhone whilst running lightly, and now this with exactly the same settings on the phone, just with the gimbal. It also folds up into an almost pocket friendly size. Next up is GriPad, and it lets you mount your phone pretty much anywhere. Whilst you've probably seen sticky pads like this, the fact that this product has a cover means that when you're not using it, you can close it. And so the stickiness lasts longer. It can supposedly be used thousands of times. I think he wants to, he wants to help pick. All right, you let me know which one you like. GoCube kind of feels like a 21st century reimagination of the Rubik's Cube. You're still looking at a 3x3 cube, with the objective being to solve it by rotating until each side is a plain color. However, I think I deserve that one. I should probably stop throwing things. However, you probably guessed it, there's an app and it adds a lot to the experience. It can not just guide you on the best next steps from where you are, but it brings mini games and challenges. Plus it records your stats. Also, the company has clearly spent a long time thinking about the feel of the cube. Each movement is super smooth and there's a satisfying lock every time you shift into a new position. The Ori is a tiny gadget that lets you make phone calls with your fingers. I'm not even joking. It connects to your smartphone and can give you a subtle vibration anytime there's a notification. But more interestingly, when you're on a phone call with someone, you can talk to them just by going like this. I'm being dead serious. Ori has a good quality microphone built in to pick up your voice and uses bone conduction to send the audio from the other person into your inner ear. What's also cool is that when a message comes in, you can literally just place it on your ear like this and it'll dictate it for you. Plus, you can use a whole load of other air gestures to control other parts of your phone, like what music track is playing. It still feels a little first gen. It doesn't pick up all the gestures I'd want it to, but I hope it improves over time. By a company called BZ Future, I think, we've got one of the better mobile gamepads. It feels tightly constructed, no flexing, and the buttons good enough. But the most important differentiator here is that it slides onto your smartphone, and this makes a whole lot more sense to me than a traditional Bluetooth gamepad, for which you'd have to find a separate holder to keep your device propped up. This also has a bit of texture on the back and just generally gives you something meatier to grip onto. Also, if you do enjoy straight to the point tech content like this, a sub would be amazing. Then we've got Stellina, probably the most expensive gadget we've ever had on this series, but the results are mind blowing. They call it an observation station. You've probably seen night mode on smartphone cameras. It allows you to still capture good detail in the dark. Well, this is kind of like that, but on steroids. Stellina has a massive Sony sensor that is built for extreme low light performance and the equivalent of 50 times zoom. So when you pair that together, you can see distant space far beyond what your eyes alone can. I took this shot of the Andromeda Galaxy and this is just after five minutes of capture time and on a day with a pretty average amount of light pollution. It's also built to be easy. It can automatically find constellations and it'll lock on and shoot them for you. Ever since we heard that Apple's air power was being discontinued, there's been this surge of alternatives. 
wireless charging pads with multiple coils to charge a couple of devices at the same time, without needing to be particularly careful about placing them exactly on top of one of the coils. This one's pretty good, it's got five coils in its main section, but realistically that does still mean you can only charge two devices with this. But then it does also have this separate section where you can charge an Apple Watch too. The Cork Mini is a tiny Bluetooth speaker which runs with the idea that the best speaker is the one you have with you. Instead of carrying around a bulky, dedicated unit, this thing can clip onto an empty bottle, turning the space inside into a sound chamber that can produce some serious bass. It's also, even on its own, a pretty detailed sounding little thing. Now, we're living in a pretty health conscious age, but the difficulty comes because we've never been busier, and so the idea of taking even more time out to go to the gym is a pretty tough sell. Enter the Active 5, a tool that allows for over 100 full body workouts. You might be thinking then, how? There's no actual weight there. Well, it's based on the idea that instead of using a dead weight, you can actually create just as much resistance by using your own body, in a sense making one half of your body work out against the other half. The Active 5, when paired up with a phone, creates a structure around this kind of exercise. Because it can measure how hard you're actually able to press against it, it can turn the whole process into a game. You'll be doing everything from pushing harder to stay over a line to sumo wrestling, and the games serve as a really cool way to distract you from the pain, but also to push you harder. Next up, the rather unfortunately named Touch You like the grip pad, you stick it onto the back of your phone, but here, if you lift one of the sides, it snaps into a phone stand. I gotta say, cool concept, but the stickiness of these pads is not hugely reassuring. This one's pretty simple. It is three useful things bundled together. An alarm clock, if you're still into the idea of not using your phone first thing in the morning. A nightlight, just bright enough to see your surroundings, and a wireless charger for your phone. It uses touch controls on the side, and whilst I'm not personally a user of the traditional alarm clock, if you were, you can't go wrong here. The All Roundo is an all-in-one charging cable. Pretty simple, so I won't spend too long on this, but on the main end, you've got micro USB, USB-C, and Lightning for Apple. And then what's also cool is that it lets you convert the USB-A port on the other end into a USB-C port. It's also coiled to prevent tangling. Then we've got Picks. They call this the backpack for those who dare to be different. It's a pretty normal bag from most angles, with a clean, uninterrupted aesthetic, and a good amount of space inside, but the differentiator is this massive pixel display on the back, which you can use to show everything from the time to a video game. As with everything nowadays, there's an app where you can choose designs from a library or create your own. So this right here is the Mr. Who's the Boss logo on my bag. For the most part, it's all a bit of fun. Most of the things that it allows you to do are not hugely beneficial, but there are use cases. I could see how having a glowing backpack might help with safety if you were, say, cycling at night. There's no internal battery, which keeps it light and spacious, but it means that if you actually want to use this display, you've got to have a power bank in there at all times. It's a good product, as long as you're clear that it's a toy, not a tool. If you enjoyed this video, there are a ton more in this series, so I'm going to link them from here. And with that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.